All right, so I'm sitting here with, my name is Antoine Johnson, first of all, uh, with Buffalo Prenatal. I'm the program manager for the Buffalo Fatherhood Initiative, but uh, right now what's important is that I'm sitting right here with Mr. Nigel, uh, who was nominated Father of the Month. Uh, congratulations to you, by the way. We, we do this every month in celebration for fathers because we know and understand that fathers are often overlooked and underappreciated, yeah. right? And so this gives us an opportunity to engage with guys like you, to celebrate you and learn more about uh, why you were nominated and let, letting the people know, you know? So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first, you know, i like to um, thank you for nominating me as Father of the Month. Okay. You know, I, I do these things, you know, because I feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. But to actually be able to be recognized for it, it, it does, you know, make you feel appreciated and right. makes you feel good. So I want to thank you guys for that. Okay. But um, I'm Nigel McClinton, I'm a 27-year-old father to a four-year-old uh, son, my son. He'd be four years old on the 26th. So happy birthday to baby boy. <laughs> but uh, me personally, um, I would describe myself as a very active father, a very active uh, friend. You know, I'm always, I work in the community a lot as well, but you know, but career-wise, I'm an electrician by trade, residential and commercial. Uh, aspiring to have my own company one day as well. Nice. So, uh, but being a father is one of the best things I could experience. It, you know, it was a long, hard road for me, yeah. personally, as well as many others that would be, you know, that probably went through the same things or something similar to right. me as well. Without getting too personal, you said something, uh, this is real organic. Without getting too personal, based on some of the challenges that you've had as of in your fathering experience, what keeps you motivated? Because my experience has been, not personally, but just hearing folks, like some guys get frustrated and they just like, yo, let the mom deal with this, I'm tired of dealing with this, whether it's custody, whatever it is. Like what keeps you or has kept you going during those tough seasons of being a father? Uh, it was very hard. I know you say personal, but you know, for me, it it was very rough for me. You know, I was dealing with, you know, the baby mama dramas and stuff like that as well. And, you know, for me, it, it definitely went very sour. Uh, so, you know, but um, my motivation was really my son, honestly, because who can raise him better than I can? Right, right. And that's how I feel. I'm his father figure. I should be there. Right. I went through the hardship. I went through court, you know, CPS, all of that stuff as well. So, you know, I mean, me being nominated father of the month, I still went through those same trial and tribulations. Yeah. But for me, I can't let them win. I just feel like I'm going to fight, right. you know, for my son as well. You know, he showed me a lot of love, and I got to give it back. I just can't, you know, just, I can't let him down. So I got to right. be there. So that's how I, that's how I go through it, all no, this. No, that's dope, man. <laughs> I, and, you know, you said something, and it's like, you know, about you being a dad, you're the father figure, right? It's so, I think it can be easy when people are going through tough times to be like, man, this is hard. I yeah. need to step back and let somebody else take care of it. It's, it's very, it's way easier to quit. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with the courts, that's what they want you to do. They want to break you down, they want you to quit. But you, you gotta keep fighting, man. You gotta keep you gotta keep putting in the work. And I said, cause there's times like I've been dealing with court, I've been doing it for about two years now. And there's been times where I was ready to, you know, just give up, mm -hmm. you know, but again, you can't let them win. Cause the first thing that come to mind is my son. Right. I feel like if I gave up now, will I be able to see him again? Mm -hmm. Probably not. You know, so I want to be there for him. He's still young. He still needs his dad. So I'm going to be there every step of the way. Right, right. There's this uh, statement that was put out there. Uh, it says something to the effect of it only takes a <laughs> moment to make a moment. Right. When you think about the different moments that you've shared with your son, which one stands out to you the most and why? Uh, let me see. I try, I try to turn all of our experiences into learning experiences, mm -hmm. whether he does good or whether he messes up. 
you know, so I'll say my favorite one probably was uh, teaching him to ride his bike. I'll say it probably one of my favorite moments. Because now there's something that I know that he knows that dad taught him. Okay. And it's a skill that he is perfecting himself. He's riding small bikes, big bikes now. And he's only going to be four. So I know, like, I like to install those skills where he'd be able to keep forever and be like, my dad taught me that. Got you. Got <laughs> you. Now that's sweet. Um, so, you know, in the interest of time and everything, for those who are curious about fatherhood programming, specifically, we offer the Nurturing Fathers program, which is one of our core programs that we offer. Uh, what was your experience like? graduating, being a graduate of it, and then what Excuse encouragement me. would you give, if any, to somebody that's like kind of on a fence, like, I don't really want to take a fatherhood class, I don't think I need it, what, what would you say? Uh, my, well, me and Nurturing Fathers, Nurturing Fathers is a very good program. I recommend it to anybody who's aspiring to be a father, or as a current father, that want to better themselves, because it's a group of men and we all, you know, share experiences, different techniques to be able to reach out to our children. I feel like it was very helpful to me, but when I first started the program, you know, probably like many others, it was with court. They wanted me to do something else. They wanted me to do a different program, and I specifically wanted to work with you, you know, because I knew, you know, we boys, we've been around for right, many right. years. And I knew what the type of work you were doing, so when I had to do these type of programs, I would be reached out to you. And like I'd rather work with, you know, you know, someone who'd be able to understand me better than systematic, you know, just court stuff. But the, so when I came into the program, I did come in with very low expectations because I felt like, geez, like I'm, they forced me to do something I don't want to do. But as you know, you get past that part and you start opening up, you start, you know, you get past the part where it's like, man, I'm not trying to do this and more like, well, since I'm in it now, let's see if I can learn something from it. And I learned various things from you and the other members of my class. Yeah. It was good enough, I even tried it again, you know? And I said, I was in and out of it. I didn't really, <laughs> I wasn't in all the classrooms in the second time, but you know, the times I was there, I was there to help some of the guys that felt like me when I first was in the program. Right. So I, you know, I definitely recommend it for sure. Yeah, no, appreciate that. And then, and then you, you have became a, an advocate and a role model to other guys in class, whether or not, say for the entire second one that you were getting into, your presence mattered. Right. Because other guys are looking at you like, oh, this is a younger father. He's engaged. He's sharing stuff about his experiences. And that makes them open up, right? Yeah. So now you have created a pathway to make them feel comfortable, like you said, to your point, when at first you were reluctant to, mm -hmm. to really get in, involved. So, man, no, thank you for sharing. Thank you for being here, being sure. a dad and a role model in the community and just all that stuff, man. Like, I wish you the best. And uh, man, I will. We'll stay connected after here. You know, we will. I always say I'm only one phone call away. But you know, to all the other fathers out there, you know, you feel like you're alone in this. You're going through stuff by yourself. You know, you feeling like that. You can always reach out to the guys, man. We all been through it. We all, you know, we all, we all went through it. We all was able to get by it. You will be too. So you never feel ashamed of what you're going through. I, I, you know, me personally, when people ask me, I tell them, I tell them what it is. I, I don't have nothing to hide. So I feel like guys coming into the program or guys thinking about the program is, is nothing to be ashamed about. It's only going to better you and better your child.